I'm Joy Postel Gaines, Women's Portfolio Strategist in the Office of the Director, Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. We are excited today to have the opportunity to meet and sit down with Dr. Ana Maria Napolis, the first Latina scientific director appointed at the National Institutes of Health. Welcome, Dr. Napolis. Thank so happy to sit and talk with you. Likewise. Thank you so much, Joy, for inviting me to be here. Absolutely. So let's just get right into it. Tell me a little bit about your background. My background is that my parents were both immigrants from rural villages in Jalisco, Mexico. Mm -hmm. So as a child of immigrants, I grew up um, in a situation where my parents uh, had um, almost no education, mm -hmm. and my father taught himself to read and write in English and uh, worked two jobs that were very uh, heavy labor intensive, hard on, on his body. But he made sure that, um, that I and my two siblings had the benefit of an excellent education in a prestigious private college. And so mm -hmm. I think that seeing him work that hard to uh, make sure we were successful mm -hmm. had an indelible mark on me. So that's my background. And um, some of the experiences I had growing up were because we didn't have much money. Mm -hmm. We had very limited access to things like preventive care, mm -hmm. preventive health care, and uh, immunizations were out of the question. So I grew up a, a sick child early on. and. Um, and also served as the interpreter for my mom during medical visits. Mm -hmm. And so all those experiences um, saw me, made me see quickly that um, economic and language and cultural factors have a significant impact on your health and your ability to access health care. So that was what, I guess, pointed me in this direction. Yeah, awesome. So can you tell me a little bit about your research and how and why it's important Sure. Um, my research has focused on working with populations that have typically been disenfranchised in our society mm -hmm. and trying to give them tools to become more engaged in their own health care mm -hmm. and also in self-management of their chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's important because these are populations that have typically not felt a great sense of control in society or mm -hmm. over their own future and their health. For example, I. Um, tested uh, and, and developed this evidence-based uh, intervention that focuses on stress management for uh, rural and urban Spanish-speaking Latinas with breast cancer because mm -hmm. they suffer disproportionately high rates of psychosocial morbidity due to their disease. Mm -hmm. So it's important to reach populations like that that don't have access to these ser services because of um, all those structural uh, factors that I was alluding to. How can the NIH environment assist you in reaching your research goals? So I think in terms of supporting the type of research that we want to engage in, mm -hmm. it's really finding different models of, um, of doing uh, contracts with external partners, uh, engaging communities in the research enterprise mm -hmm. in a meaningful way. Those are all things that we can do, I mean, and that we need to do to better understand disparities and close the health gaps. Will the work that you do at NIMHD be impactful in that way to those groups? It will. My hope um, with NHD, uh, with the Division of Intramural Research, is to grow a program that um, focuses on identifying how social adversity affects human biology mm -hmm. and then developing interventions to mitigate the effects of those um, structural and societal factors mm -hmm. among populations who feel like that adversity is inescapable. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance work and family life as a career scientist? For me, the important thing is to really be grounded and focused on mm -hmm. what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And it's always been, um, you know, my daughters and ensuring their welfare and their uh, success and fulfillment in life, mm -hmm. and, as well as my own fulfillment. And I think those are important things. I think we're socialized as women not to put ourselves first. Yes. You know? And culturally, I was socialized to be humble. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest lessons I had to learn to balance that is to learn to to really um, advertise who I am, my strengths, and what I bring mm -hmm. uh, to whatever situation I'm involved in and how I can strengthen that and make it better. So can you tell me what kind of advice you'd give to someone who is 
maybe just starting out in their scientific career or even those who have been in science for a while and, and haven't quite reached that pinnacle level where they'd like to be in their career? My advice to young women who are starting out a career in science mm -hmm. is to, to not focus on the past, to mm -hmm. live in the present and not let the past affect your future. Mm -hmm. um, and then find those things that are sources of strength and resilience for you mm -hmm. so that when you meet those challenges, mm -hmm. you know that you can take those setbacks and turn them into, into accomplishments. Mm -hmm. What's the best advice you've ever received? The best advice I received was to create a narrative for myself, and it's something I encourage women, especially any woman, who, any minority, any individual, mm -hmm. is to create that narrative for yourself. You know, who are you, what type of person are you, and what do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. And for me, that narrative, um, you know, it was a transition. It went from imposter syndrome, where I felt I wasn't good enough mm -hmm. to be a, a scientist or to survive in a, prestigious academic um, medical institution mm -hmm. to questioning, you know, trying to live under the radar mm -hmm. and really not putting my research out there. Right. And so it went from that to, to realizing that, um, that I can handle setbacks, that I'm a confident person, mm -hmm. that I do good science, mm -hmm. that I have something to contribute to improve the health of minority populations. And that becomes, I think, creating that narrative for yourself mm -hmm. and uh, using that to find power and to um, help you be persistent uh, is critical because I think persistence is a key mm -hmm. as well. Did you have good mentors? And do your mentors need to look like you to be effective? Well, uh, for me, I think the important things were in terms of the mentorship I received is first to acknowledge, I think, the role that my father had. And, and um, I wouldn't say it was so much innate as, as learned, you know, mm -hmm. observing him mm -hmm. uh, try to better himself and learn how to read and write and mm -hmm. also become involved in politics and uh, social volunteerism in our community. Mm -hmm. All those things were, were, I think, great experiences for me as a child that I carried in into adulthood. Mm -hmm. um, and as, in terms of mentors, I was very fortunate. I mean, a lot of my mentors were minorities. Mm -hmm. They were Latinos in some cases um, and very supportive, shared similar backgrounds. But I also had just as many mentors that that were white, they were from the mainstream, that had um, diversity at the heart of what they did mm. and really believed in it mm -hmm. and so believed in me mm -hmm. when I didn't believe in myself. So have you experienced any setbacks in your life as a career scientist that you could share with us? Uh, Joy, I'd be misrepresenting uh, my experiences if I said that I've had no setbacks mm -hmm. in terms of my career as a minority woman mm -hmm. in science. Um, on the positive side, I've had great mentors who've been very dedicated and committed uh, to diversity issues, and that's been a positive influence in my life. Mm -hmm. On the not so positive side, I've experienced uh, blatant, blatant instances of racism, mm -hmm. discrimination, um, financial setbacks that, that um, had an impact. and. Also, the whole work-life balance when um, faced with stressful caregiving situations. Mm, yeah. So those are all things I've had to balance, but I think they've also helped me find my strengths and uh, resilience. Right. Within our uh, minority communities, the talent is there, the intellect is there, and if uh, we're not represented, it's usually due to lack of access or lack of information. Mm -hmm. um, so I think there's a lot we can do through professional networks, through minority networks to get the word out about opportunities here at NIH. And uh, through that, diversify the staff here, the, the scientists, and create, I think, I mean, there's a lot of evidence that shows that diversity improves science and it, it leads to groundbreaking discoveries that might not have been there, might not have happened were it not for the diversity. Mm -hmm. So I think all those things of capitalizing on social networks and professional networks, going to communities, going to minority serving institutions, um, mm -hmm. and really being aware of how to reach the populations because the talent is there and the intellect is there. So what is your vision for the work that you are doing? You've already started in the last seven months to do here at NIH. Where would you like to see it go? 
I would like to, one, grow the program so that we have more diverse uh, tenure track investigators mm -hmm. within the, the division, and then focus on really identifying the social behavioral mechanisms that interact with human biology and also with um, uh, things like environmental factors mm -hmm. and genetic factors, um, but really the focus on kind of structural factors and adversity and social determinants and how that um, results in, in poor outcomes so that we can then in turn intervene and create interventions that can reach populations that aren't being uh, reached by some of the interventions that we know work and, and mm -hmm. improve health. So it's to more broadly implement those and disseminate those evidence-based interventions in communities that need them the most. What are your um, thoughts on how you'd like to see things move forward here for, your, for you and your research? I would like to develop some ongoing relationships with local communities that are affected by health disparities. Uh, as well as national communities and bring them to the table in terms of the, the research. And that involves um, involving them in the studies, helping us plan studies, helping us disseminate evidence-based interventions within their communities that we know will improve health. That's where I'd like to see us go. We were talking a little bit offline about your um, work, understanding the, the necessary factor of having language access in the healthcare field. Can you talk a little bit about that to our audience? Language access is important because there is a lot of science that shows that the less engaged pa patients are in their own healthcare, mm -hmm. the poorer their outcomes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that means worse health, worse quality of, of healthcare as well. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what I've done in my um, research is looked at different modes of in, in, inter medical interpretation mm -hmm. and um, using technology to more broadly disseminate uh, language access for populations that need it. And we know the immigrant population is growing mm -hmm. in the United States, so that's be becoming more and more critical, and it's doing it in a cost-effective way mm -hmm. that healthcare systems can tolerate and that provi providers embrace and will use as well. So I think it's a very important issue for us. Right. So you've been here seven months. What is your um, favorite thing about NIH? I love how scientifically rich the environment is. The intellectual stimulation that you get on a daily basis, just watching people uh, achieve and give talks and uh, do some of the amazing things that they're doing in the labs and this new groundbreaking science is incredible. And people have been so welcoming and helpful. Dr. Nopoulos, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And I'm sure that everyone watching will benefit from your, from your talk. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. <laughs>